when Moses received the written law. Yes. Yes. It was Mount Pisgah. Yeah. And God showed Moses the promise. My, my, my. <clears throat> it was on Mount Nebo. God buried Moses and then turned around and buried his grave. Y'all ain't gonna see it. Right. It, it, was, it. It was Mount Zion that God showed David that he is a strong and a very present help in a time of trouble. It was Mount Olive when Jesus retreats and he goes into prayer all night long. It was on Mount Hermon where Jesus was transfigured. Uh -huh. That's when his divinity outshined his humanity. Y'all yeah. ain't talk about that. But now here we are landed on Calvary. 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 Calvary supersedes all of the other mountains. And somebody asked the question that they said to me, Dr. Boyd, that there were only three crosses on Calvary. Well. But you said in your introduction that there was the creator, there was the Christ, a criminal, and they were all at Calvary. Well, you know, God was there because, first of all, he was there because he's omnipresent. Yes, sir. God is like pain. You can't see it, but you know it's there. <laughs> he's, 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 he's omnipresent. He was there. You can't see him. But, but he was there. Uh, uh, he, he's omnipresent because he's been where he's going before he left where he was going. Y'all understand? He, he's gone. And, and, and so here, as we look at Calvary tonight, on, on this Good Friday, and I, I just got a few more black minutes and I'm going to be done. And, and, and Jesus, as he was dying on the cross, there were a few things that happened there. He suffered. And then he sacrificed. Y'all ain't gonna help me. You know, since I'm preaching about the cross, you ought to have a response from the crowd. Y'all gonna help me preach tonight? When, when I looked at this cross, Dr. Williams, I saw three things that were occurring as Jesus was dying on the old rugged cross. The first thing I saw was his pain. When the Bible teaches us in Isaiah 53 and 5, it said he was wounded. Yeah. Yeah. For our transgression, bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of his peace was upon him. Our peace was upon him, and by his stripes yeah. we, we are here. The second thing I saw, not only the pain, but I saw a payment. The Bible said, John 3 16, for God so loved the world that he gave. Amen. A ransom, a payment for our. And then the last thing I saw was the price. The price for Jesus lies on the cross. He says, no man, no man. take my life. But I lay it down, but in three days, I'll pick it up again. Uh, when I looked at this, I kept looking at the cross. I kept looking, and every time I would look at the cross, I would see something else, Dr. Clark. Uh, uh, when I looked at the cross, I saw three spans of time. Yeah. I saw from the sixth to the ninth hour, that yeah. three spans of time. Yeah. When I looked again, and I looked at what took place at this Cal Calvaristic drama, as we looked at Calvary, I see three trials, three terminations, and they were preparing three tombs. Y'all want to help me? I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. I'm almost done. Uh, when I look at the cross again, I tried not to keep looking at the cross, but it's Good Friday, so I couldn't help but keep looking at the old rugged cross. And when I looked at the cross, listen here, I looked at the cross, I saw three characters. I saw the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm almost done. I'm going to make me do this by myself. Come on, talk about it. And when I looked again, when I looked again, there were three depictions that I saw. The first thing I saw was a humble sinner. The second thing I saw was a hardened sinner. And then the third thing I saw was a holy savior. Y'all yeah. 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 The humble sinner was courageous, he was cognitive, and he also cried out for help. The hardened sinner, he was unconvinced. He was uncomfortable, and yet he was unconverted. Uh -huh. You know what I thought about that? You know, because when I look at Jesus, you know, and everywhere Jesus has gone, everything.
everything that Jesus has come in contact with has never remained the same. But this is the only fella that has come in contact with Jesus and refused to change. Y'all let me Man. The hardened sinner, the hardened sinner, the humble sinner here tonight, he received his deliverance. Yes. Oh, my but the hardened sinner, he received death. Yes. But the Holy Savior, he demonstrated his deity and his divine character on here tonight. So let me let me get past all of that and shine some light on this sermonic malefactor that's on the cross with Jesus. This hardened sinner, as he talks to Jesus, there was a monologue. Now you know the difference between a monologue and a dialogue. A monologue is when you just the only one talking and ain't nobody talking back to you. Kind of sort of like what's going on in this room tonight. You know, I'm hogging up in here, y'all ain't saying nothing. Uh, uh, it was just a monologue. And, and, and he told Jesus, he had the audacity to say, if you be. If, if, if. And even though Jesus right there on the cross, he exercised his right to remain silent. He said not a mumbling word. Jesus, Jesus exercised his right to remain silent. And so as I get ready now to get to the highway, there's a few points I want to bring out, amen, about this criminal on the cross. Uh -huh. I, when I looked at this Christ, when I looked at this cross, I saw one more thing. And y'all pardon me, I saw one more thing. I saw Jehovah, I saw Jesus, and I saw some junk. <laughs> I'm going to make it plain. Let me eat it. Y'all don't want to have on the cross, he had, he was in a bad situation. And first of all, he had the wrong persona. He was arrogant. Yeah. And the Bible teaches us in Peter 5 and 6, it says, humble yeah. yourself under the mighty hand of God that you, he may exalt you in due season. Yeah. The first thing was he had the wrong persona. Uh -huh. The second thing was he had the wrong perception. Uh -huh. uh, because he viewed Christ as a man and not the Messiah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Good here. Yeah. I feel that west side pushing up in there. Uh, 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 he had the wrong persona. Uh, 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 uh. He had the wrong perspective. And lastly, he was mocking the wrong person. Yeah. 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 Here it is. Here it is. Because, because he was mocking the wrong person, he missed his passport to paradise. He, he missed his past, what to paradise. And I started thinking, I said, now, now here it is. This crook. On the cross. In a crisis. And it's in critical condition. But yet he wants to criticize the Christ. I'm sitting there to get that and say that again. Here it is, is a crook. On the cross. In a crisis, in critical condition, but yet he wants to criticize the Christ. Isn't it, 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 that like, it, 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 that something like some people you know? Here, here it is. You, here it is. You in a fix. You need some help. And the person that can help, you want to talk about them like a dog. People like that, I call them. So how? How it is when you're coming down to the benediction of your life, and you need a savior, amen, to get you from here to glory. How is it that this man, this malefactor, this criminal on the cross, how is it that he wants to question? Yes, sir. The all rested one. How is it that he wants to mock the El Gumala, the God of recompense? How is it that he wants to mock the antique Yaomi, the ancient of days? That means he is he is old, but yet he is so new. He's never outdated because he never needs to be updated because he's God. 
how it is that this criminal on the cross wants to mark the megalosome. Yeah, the majestic one. And so here it is, this crazy man, this criminal on the cross, he marks the man that sits on the axis of the earth. He leans over the balcony of the universe. Yeah, this man, he looks down from the height of his sanctuary. He hijacks the atmosphere of the enemies. This is the same man, Dr. Will, that put a laugh in a high heel. Yeah, he put a growl in a bell. He put a roar in a lion. He put sour in the lemon. He put sweet in the honey. He put wet in the water. He put hot in the pepper. Put a hump in a camel's back. And put a song in a mockingbird's throat. But yet he wants to. Yeah, mock my Jesus. Well, as I get ready to close here tonight, I am so glad when I looked at the cross. Not only, not only did I see Jehovah, Jesus, and John. But as I further looked, I began to see Jehovah, Jesus, and a man named James. I saw myself there on that old cross. Because the songwriter said, were you there when they crucified my Lord? Well, if you are a liar, guess what tonight? You were there. If you are a fornicator, tonight uh, you were there. On your income tax. <laughs> yeah, if you're sleeping with someone that's not your husband tonight, you were there. I've got to get out of here, but I'm reminded of a story that I, my grandmama used to get me every night and sit me down by the TV screen. Said, come on in here, boy. I want you to learn something from Sanford and Son. I looked at Sanford and Son and I didn't understand what Grandmama was trying to teach me. She said, Well, what did you learn tonight? I said, I ain't learned nothing about nothing but a junk man. He said, Go on to come back and back tomorrow night. Sit down at the TV. Tell me what you learned tonight. I told my grandmama I didn't learn nothing tonight. Nothing but nothing about a man and some junk. She said, well, just keep on living because one day you're going to understand the sample in song played a significant role About Sanford and Son. Can I tell y'all what it is? Sanford and Son is about a man named Fred who was the father. About a boy named Lamont who is the son. He told his son, Go on out in the world, get me some junk, bring it back home. I want to clean it up and put it on display. The father, one of these days, about 28 years ago, he sent his son down to Chicago to come and get some junk by the name of James. Some of y'all call me, some of y'all call me Reverend, some call me Pastor, some call me Bishop. But I got news for you, I ain't nothing.
some junk <laughs> And he cleaned you up And got you together Yes, he did Somebody say yes Say yes Yes, yes Yes I'm so glad I got to be here But thank God For Calvary The blood Is still Understand. I wish I had a 